semen retention, body gains, and ignoring the most high's warnings. Semen retention, body gains, and, ex and ignoring the most high's warning. That's what I'm talking about. The most high has sent somebody in your life. They might not look like how you want them to look. The most high might, might give you something. It might not be a whole bunch, but that something is for you to sit down. Just sit down because there is a bear out there. So I'm going to give you this little bit because I know that you like going out there getting it. This little bit is to just keep you in the house until the danger passes. Then you can go out. See, we can't ignore that. Ignoring that can be life or death, man. It's, it's as serious as that. Excuse me if I stutter a little bit. I've been up for a long time last night. Matter of fact, I didn't even get no sleep. I was just meditating and praying and thanking the most high for all the good stuff that he did for me and my family as the neighbors bumped their music. I got to dance into it. Like around one in the morning, I got to dance into it. No, I'm not going to go knock on nobody's door and tell them what they already damn know. I'm about to just look and see what the most high do because he has been doing it. You hear what I'm saying? Now, listen, we can't we can't ignore the most high's warnings. The most high has sent people in our life and they might not look like how we expect the most high to look. They might not have a lot of money. They might not be as beautiful as you as you want them to be. But these are the ones who the most high sent to you. I remember this was years ago. I was living with my sister. I was working with this guy named Abe, one of the last black landscaping companies in LA. And, you know, every day I get off the train and I walk to my sister's house. Before I walk to her house, I go to the store, get some blunts, and then I get some weed. And then, you know, I go home and chill until the next day. And every time I go down there, I see this young guy, but I pay him no mind. And then one day he was like, hey, you want to buy some weed? And he pulled it out and it looked like some fire. So I bought some from him and I was like, hey, you saved me. You saved me some time. You want to smoke? So we sat up there and we were smoking and we started talking. And he said that he wanted to join. The, he was about to join the gang that was in the neighborhood. And I told him that it wasn't a good idea, you know what I'm saying? I started talking about God to him, the Bible. Even though I was smoking and he was smoking, I was still talking about God. I always I always been like that. You hear what I'm saying? So he was feeling it too. He was starting to understand God and all of that. He wanted to read the Bible. This is all happening within like an hour. We up under the uh the freeway. The Avalon, uh, 105, the 105 freeway, right there at that, that Green Line train station, right under the bottom of the platform. We smoke. And then I thought about it. I was like, hey, oh, Abe, he need another person to, to come work with him, to come work with us. And then he was like, I, I told him. And then he was like, all right, I got to wait for my moms to come because I'll be watching the house and all of this. He lived exactly right next door to the to the um to the train station. And then I was like, what? And then he was like, yeah, we can go on my porch. She about to come back in like 10 minutes. So sure enough, we on the porch. She pull up. As soon as she got out the car, she looked me up and down. I'm like, how you doing, ma'am? She looked me up and down, rolled her eyes, and she asked him, who the hell is he talking about me? And he and the guy is trying to explain, like, yeah, this is the guy. Um, he come to actual about work and all of that type of stuff can can i work but before he could say all of that she was like why you bring this old bum a hey, nigga ass nigga all to my house and all of this type of stuff all of this and true i did have on coveralls my boots had grass all on them because i was working all day i looked at like a worker but i had like a little chain on i had a watch that's when I wore earrings. I had an earring in my ear. So I wasn't like a bum. I was just like a long day's work. 
she cussed me out. He was embarrassed. And, you know, I was like, it's all good. She told me never to come back again. All that type of stuff. You hear what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden, about two weeks later, one of my homeboys was like, hey, did you hear what happened under the train station? And I'm like, nah. And he was like, they killed they killed two dudes. And I'm like, what? So with further research, I realized that somebody rode up to that young cat and killed him and his cousin. The same spot that we sat there two weeks before and smoked, they killed him right there. They shot his cousin up like 50 times. And I'm not exaggerating. I know I'll be exaggerating and being sarcastic. No, they really shot him up like 50 times. They shot the young homie up like three times, but they both still died. You know what I'm saying? And that hunted me for a long time. Let me tell you another story. I'll get back to that one. I remember we, me and my girl, we just got our apartment, a new apartment. And I'm up in the game, too. I'm in the game, and I got an apartment. We, we went from living with some people to getting our own apartment. I had pounds of weed and all of that. And I used to have workers. And one of my workers came one day and bought enough stuff that I didn't have to send my girl out. And I was like, hey, we could chill for today down. We could like even chill tomorrow because, you know, we already reached the goal. It's eight o'clock in the morning and we already reached the goal because one of our workers came and, you know, got all of the stuff except for like this little hundred dollars worth of stuff. And then my girl was like, "Okay," And she's still getting dressed. And I'm like, you fit a go. You fit a go. You fit a go work. And she like, yeah. And I'm like, but you don't have to. And she's still getting dressed, right? I'm not the type of person that hold nobody against their will, nor do I try to be like, hey, you should look at it my way. Nigga, if you want to go, go. So she went, she got her $100 worth of weed. She went to the park. About three hours later, her mom's is calling me talking about, they arrested her at the park. <laughs> they arrested her at the park. She just had the baby. She was still nursing. The baby was like three months old. They gave her two years with half. So she did a whole year. I had to take care of the baby, man. The baby was only like three or four months, five months, something like that. She was still nursing. Man, I had to go and get on welfare. I was like the only father on the welfare side where all the mothers was at. I was like one of the only fathers. I used to push my daughter for a whole year. Everywhere we I went, she had to go. I learned a lot of respect for women with children at that time, man. It was nights that I woke up and I damn near cried because I couldn't just roll over and go back to sleep and depend on you know, my girl to take care of the, the, the baby. I had to do the diapers. I had to do the wick. I had to do the shots. I had to do the the oatmeal and the cereals. I had to do the formula, uh, Infamil Gentle Ease. Yeah, Infamil Gentle Ease so she won't get gas. I had to burp the baby, man. I had to do all of that. Her first tooth. It was me and her. Her first walking, it was me and her while her mama was in jail. Why? Why was her mama in jail? Because she didn't take heed. Soon as my worker came and bought us out, I knew. I knew not to sell not one dime. That was that was it. You hear what I'm saying? We even had a rule up in the park, me and a couple of homies that were slanging that, hey, if the goal is $100 today, Nigga, we don't get 105, we get $100 and we out. It wasn't it wasn't $100. That's just, you know, I'm just rounding it. But yeah, she broke the rule. God came and told me, "Hey, don't go to the park. I'm gonna have one of your workers get all of the weed. Don't go to the park. Why? Because the 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 the, the bike police is up there taking niggas to jail. She went the only one. That, they did a sweep that day. 
They did a sweep. She wasn't the only one that went there. Went to jail. You hear what I'm saying? The dude under the freeway. I really came as a messenger, man, in his life. I talked to my moms about this. I talked to a couple of people about this because it haunted me. I came to save that dude. The Most High sent me to put that dude on another path. And his mama, his own mama, denied denied the help. And, 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 she, and she, she chased me away verbally. And the Bible says that if a prophet come into a town and people reject them, then dust, they, dust the, uh, the dust off their shoes and leave, and it'll be bad for that town. That's what happened to that young cat family, man. It was bad after that. They didn't recover after that. They stayed there for a little while, but they went down and down, and the mother gained a lot of weight. She wasn't like, she wasn't like how she was when she was cussing me out. When I seen her, I put my head down. I was so ashamed. She didn't have, I, I couldn't even look at her because I knew that she was so, so hurt. And I didn't want to look like I was the voodoo, man. Because if people don't believe in the most high, when things like this happen, they think we the voodoo man or something. I'm not the damn voodoo man. I was just coming to help your damn son not be a gangbanger, which he became a gangbanger. He became it. He became it. Come to find out, he became a gangbanger a week after that. And then the week after he, him becoming a gangbanger, he got killed. He was only like 17 years old, about to be 18 a couple of months later. Was willing to start reading the Bible and everything. Because, see, when I talk about the Bible, I'm not just going over the stuff that the pastors is going over and stuff like that. I go over the stuff that make you realize that your uncle might have been one of the disciples, man. So he was listening. I had his ear, man. I had his ear. Shit, i tell you another story. I remember one time I'm on my porch. It's my birthday. It's my birthday, and I'm on the porch, and my brother, my younger brother, he's a gangbanger, and he had two of his homies. He had two of his homies that was on the porch waiting for him to get ready. And I was on the side of the house. I came. I knew them. I just wasn't from the gang, but I knew them like like family. And one of them, he got shot in the head uh, like a year or two before, but he survived. And I come around the corner. They say, what's up? And I just get the, you know, just get the preaching to him for some reason. I'm like, yeah, man, God saved you. Because you had a daughter, right? Because when he got shot and he was supposed to die, his his baby moms was pregnant like nine months pregnant. Like he would have died and the baby would have been born like, like literally like, right? And I was telling him the reason that the reason that the most high allowed you to live is so that you can be a father to your child. And and it was sinking through him. Man, we was getting ready to pray and everything. I'm talking about gangbangers, man. We was on my, my porch. We was getting ready to pray and everything. And my brother came out. And at this time, he was way bigger than me. You know, penitentiary type big and all that stuff. And then he was like, man, what the hell is you telling them? And I'm like, I'm telling them about God like mama used to tell us. And he like, man. And he pulled out a gang of crack. And he was like, this is my God, nigga. And, he, and out of his other pocket, he pulled out a gang of money. And he was like, this is my God, nigga. What you talking about? And he asked his homies, what could feed you? What he talking about or, or what, 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 what's in my hands? And his homies thought about it and was like, yeah, what you talking about? What's in your hands? And I'm like, oh, man. And he asked me, he said, besides all that, what you want for your birthday? Because remember, it was my birthday that day. I said, you know what, man? I don't want nothing, man. And he was like, because the nigga already done damn hurt my feelings and stuff, man. Now you want to ask me what I want for my birthday with all this drug money. I said, just go get me some Chinese food, man, from across the street from your spot. Because I know where you're going to go sell your dope is right across the street from the Chinese food. Give me an egg foo young. Give me some beef and broccoli, and give me some orange chicken, man. He didn't come back for hours and hours, and he didn't come back for years. 
that night when he went when he went out when them three left he immediately got locked up for that dope and all that money he was in jail and one of the guys came to came to my window like 12 12 in the morning and he was like hey did they let him out and i'm like what is you talking about they like they got your brother uh, uh some hours ago and i'm like what Look, see, he trying to block the message that the Most High sent the people. And this is what happened because his friend didn't get the message. You know what happened to his friend that didn't get the message, that got shot in the head and was spared because his daughter? Well, he got killed like three months later, man. He got shot on the other side of the head, man. Yeah, sometimes God send the messenger to you when you better take heed. How could you tell that it's one of God's messengers? Because he ain't telling you to do nothing evil. He ain't telling you to, 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 to go on, girl, go cheat on your baby daddy. He ain't nothing. He ain't telling you to beat the hell out of your baby mama or go overseas and go get some prostitutes or something like that. He ain't telling you that. He telling you the truth, the health. He's telling you stuff, how to get a damn job or, or nah, man, think about it before you go around there and, 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 and kill them dudes. He sees he's, He's rationalizing and speaking truth to your ass. That's how you can tell when the messenger comes to you because he's going to come with the message directly to you for you. I know I said a lot of stories and all of that stuff, man, but the first story, the most high sent me to that dude because he must have seen death on that dude. I said, The dude was supposed to be working with me and Abe. And he would have learned more about Christ and he would have still been there. That's what I feel. As far as my girl, the Most High sent us, the worker, to clean us out so that we didn't have to go out. I was going to order pizza and do all of that type of stuff and just kick, kick it. And it's very rare that I kick it like that when I'm hustling. Something just told me to let's kick it, but she didn't. And look what happened. And then with my brother and his friends, the Most High sent me to talk to that one guy, the homie, rest in peace. He was the homie. You know what I'm saying? What, I, what happened with him was I guess they robbed they robbed some Mexicans for some weed and they caught him slipping, man, and, and chased him down and, 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 and did him greasy. That was, that was a hard one, you know what I'm saying? That made a lot of people sad, that one right there. He, he was one of the real homies. But he said that he said that what my brother had in his hands was more important than the words that was coming out my mouth, man. You hear what I'm saying? When the most high sends somebody in your life that's teaching you the righteousness, I don't care if they got a jerry curl, man. I don't care if they got a lisp or can't pronounce the words as good or come from the hood or they a tall, tall white man that's skinny or a short Asian guy or African. or I don't care when the most high sends somebody in your life, man. You better take heed. I didn't, I didn't seen it. I didn't seen the bad things that happen. I could keep going, man, but this video would be like 75 hours, man of examples of what I've witnessed when the most high sucked somebody in, in your life. And then you, you, you look just like lot, just like lots wife, the most high sent the angels to get them up out of there. And instead of following the angel lead and doing the righteous thing, the messengers, she want to look back and turn them to salt, man. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back at you with another video. Peace.